Okay. So we're primarily dealing with ligaments and tendons, and that's what you're going to be assisting us with or a, a major player in. And the reason uh, ligaments and tendons are a big challenge is three reasons. Number one is they have a really poor blood supply. So for the body to build scar tissue and things like that on them is challenging because it doesn't have the nutrition that it needs. It also doesn't get usually a really good inflammatory response. The second big problem, so you've got the poor blood supply. The second problem is they're incredibly strong structures and the body uses scar tissue to repair them and the scar tissue isn't, isn't adequate, but these, these things are super, super strong. And then the last problem with ligaments and tendons is the viscoelastic properties. Um, tendons have all these really cool properties. The main one is viscoelasticity and scar tissue is not elastic. It doesn't stretch, it doesn't creep very well. So um, the viscoelastic properties are the issue. And that results in long-term problems and poor healing. And so that's what we're gonna be fixing today. So let's go into more detail about the three phases of healing. So last time we talked about how ligaments and tendons are made primarily of type one collagen. So if this is a ligament or a tendon, the type one collagen lines up in very tight bundles like this. So, and type one collagen is the strongest stuff your body makes. And then these bundles of collagen have little cross links in them. And so it's really hard to tear or damage them because in order for them to break or tear, you have to tear them all at the same time because they pull as a single unit. Um, and remember the primary mechanism is the, in fact, the only way to really damage a ligament or tendon is to stretch it beyond its normal range of motion. So like with my fingers, as long as they stay within this range, no matter how fast someone moves them, you can wiggle my finger as fast as you want violently, but until you take it beyond its normal range of motion, it's almost impossible to injure it. Uh, you could, and they crush really well and all kinds of things, but that's the primary mechanism of injury is stretching too far. Um, you can do it repetitively, but it takes a lot. And any questions about that? No. We'll okay. get on that. Yeah. And then what happens is when you do tear a ligament, it can, it can tear microscopically. Um, basically, you rip into it and it tears, it can usually tear like a piece of paper a little rip in it, okay? Mm -hmm. And you can tear it in one big piece or 50 little ones, kind of like a rope will sometimes fray in multiple locations. But for our demonstration purposes, let's just say we got a great big rip. In the type three or type one collagen like that. And when that happens, there's three stages the body goes through um, to fix it. The first stage we call the inflammatory response. The second stage is the repair stage. And the third stage is remodel phase. Everybody knows the inflammatory response. Sometimes the repair stage is called the uh, uh, fibroblast. Uh, or the fibrosis stage, <clears throat> or the granular phase. It all means the same thing. And the remodel stage is called the maturation phase. Um, the inflammatory response, the thing to remember is that a typical inflammatory response is one to three days. If it's longer than 48 hours, or if the inflammation doesn't start going down over after 48 hours, that means the patient is doing something to aggravate it. There's something that's re-damaging the tissue. That's because remember, inflammation is triggered by the when cells open up or spill their guts out. So there's something that's aggravating, irritating. Now, 
you know, if you have a major injury, like my daughter sprained her ankle and it was swollen for almost two and a half, three weeks, but the swelling was continuously going down. It just took the body three weeks because there was a huge pool of blood in there and the body had to reabsorb all of that material. But ligaments and tendons typically will feel better after just a few days if you immobilize them and prevent irritation to the tissue. Okay. And of course, our goal is to minimize inflammation because during the inflammatory phase, white blood cells come into the area and they begin to debris the area. They pick up all the broken pieces of collagen and any other tissue and they're looking for bacteria and, and they basically clean out the area. But prolonged, uh, prolonged inflammation, they keep irritating the area and they start cleaning up stuff they shouldn't clean up. Okay. So our goal during the inflammatory phase is simply to get rid of it as fast as we can. So of course we rest is the big one and I'll spend a lot of time emphasizing to patients. Remember we're dealing with chronic patients, patients who've had the injuries for months or even years. And so we're constantly trying to help educate them as to uh, if you're still in pain and, and it's not healing, it's probably your fault. You're doing something to irritate it. And this is where you're gonna be able to uh, have an impact, not just in educating the patient how to rest, because that's the number one reason people stay in the inflammatory phase, is they're doing something that they shouldn't be doing. So, you know, you'll need to help with that, but also you can do things, um, and, you know, we'll talk more about those, but uh, anything you can do to lower inflammation chemically. Drugs are okay, but they tend to have negative side effects. They tend to be more powerful in limiting the inflammation response, and they don't have a lot of benefit um, as far as that goes. Do you have any remedies or anything you do right off the top of your head to control inflammation besides rest and ice? Uh, I love BCQ. It's got it's uh, bromelain, boswellia, quercetin, and uh, curcumin. I usually do two capsules. Brand that you use or. It, BCQ is made, I can't remember the name of the brand. I'm terrible with names, but the, it, there, that is a brand name product. Mm -hmm. um, and it's on full script. If you guys have a full script um, account. We do. But, uh, it's a, I do have one. I can shoot you guys over a link to it if you want. Um, but it's a fantastic product. And I usually have people take two capsules about every three hours for the first 24 hours. And then the next day, three capsules two to three times a day because it's very safe. It's very effective as long as they right. take it with food um, because the Boswellia can kind of irritate the stomach lining, but it's fantastic for uh, pain relief and uh, as a, kind of a team of anti-inflammatories. That's great. That should work great. So yeah, we're looking for any of those kinds of solutions, especially the more natural approach because that's kind of the emphasis of our office, but okay. Any other questions about the inflammatory stage? I know it's a bad phase to be in. Yeah. And as chiropractors, the nice thing about adjustments is we can adjust people while they're in the inflammatory stage. Uh, it's a skill thing and you have to be very gentle, but you do light mobilizing adjustments that help. The problem with the inflammation phase is, is the amount of pain. If there's pain, you can be sure you're in the inflammation stage. And the one thing that chiropractic adjustments do really well is they trigger uh, mechanoreceptors. And remember, mechanoreceptors and type C nerve endings compete. They run the same pathway to the brain so that one inhibits the other. So when you start triggering mechanoreceptors with adjustments and, and that quick movement, um, it actually calms down the nerve endings. So um, now I want to talk about the repair phase. Uh, the repair phase is, is where we do most of our work. Um, in this office, um, because in the repair phase, the body begins replacing the damaged and torn collagen with type three collagen. So first you should understand the repair phase is typically anywhere from three weeks to 12 weeks long. And it usually peaks at about the third week. So I say three weeks if you're an infant, but as soon as you hit 15 or 20, it's six weeks, eight weeks. You know, I'm 50 years old. It takes me about 10 weeks to get through this phase. And remember, these are all on a curve. So 
the uh, the inflammatory response goes like this and it spikes after 48 hours and then begins fading and it can fade quickly or it can take its time to fade. The repair phase begins at 48 hours way back here and it ramps up to at about three weeks and then it fades down. So at the 10th week, you, there's not a lot going on, but it's still technically the repair phase because the body is building type three collagen. If it's making type three collagen, you're in the repair phase. And then the remodel phase, we'll talk about that in a second, but it actually begins at about the three week period. So when you're at the peak of the repair phase, the remodel phase is just kicking into gear. And we'll talk about that in a second. But so your body's making this type three collagen and the, the heart of the problem of the repair phase of healing is that this type three collagen, number one, it's only about 70% as strong as type one collagen. So right off the bat, you've lost 30% of the strength just because the molecule itself is not as tough. <clears throat> the other problem is the body does not go in and start making nice, neat lines of type three collagen. <clears throat> the body actually goes in and randomly places the collagen. The collagen molecules are not even straight. They actually form in a very haphazard pattern. And they attach everywhere. This stuff sticks. So if you've ever peeled off a scab and there's goo underneath the white goo, that's type three collagen the body's dumping into place in that area. You see the issue you're going to have with this type three collagen as it forms in the in the tendon. Oh yeah, it's not going to be as strong. It's not going to be as flexible. Right, that's exactly it. So you have the decreased strength and the decreased flexibility. And I like to explain to patients in this state <clears throat> because it's type three and because the molecules are not all lined up exactly right. This is probably 10% as strong as the original was. Remember, this ligament or tendon is the same as the steel cable. The scar tissue that forms is pathetic. And if you leave it like this, um, it's incredibly weak. They've done lots of experiments where they will take and immobilize. Um, they'll take you know, rats and bunnies and they cut one of their tendons and then they sew it back together and then they immobilize it in a cast for the entire repair phase. And when they take it off, it's literally 10% as strong tensile strength. So that's why if you immobilize something, even for two or three weeks, remember the repair phase only lasts, it peaks at three weeks. So when you immobilize, there's actually a lot of research that says if you immobilize a fresh, severe grade two injury, um, for two weeks, you double the treatment time. In other words, now it's gonna take you twice as long to get any kind of an improvement to this joint. So it's not flexible, it's not strong. And, and this is why the primary way that you evaluate a ligament injury is the first thing that we're gonna check is range of motion. If their range of motion is less than 10 or 20% from normal, we know that scar tissue is already formed in that joint and is now limiting that joint. So 